Good evening, good evening, good evening. As Pastor Brad always says, and I love to say it, today is the Lord, the day that the Lord has made, and I choose to rejoice. You know, there's times when it's hard to choose to rejoice. Amen? Now that'll preach. But the joy of the Lord is our strength, and so when we choose to rejoice, we have his joy, and it is our strength, and it helps us get through the day. Amen? Well, we have what, prime timers tomorrow night? Yes, we have grief share tomorrow night, right? Yes, okay, thank you. We have the women's conference this Saturday. It starts at 10 a.m., um, followed by a little luncheon, and it's all going to be in the gym. It is the bilingual service, but we have been asked by Pastor Tammy to please come and serve, the women of Central to please come and serve, even if it's just ushering people around the, the church building and showing them where to go, um, offering to be hands and feet. Amen. It's not going to take all of your day. It's just in the morning. So I hope that you ladies can all come and join me and the others that are coming. It's going to be wonderful. And we get an amazing word. Pastor Brad was here last year with us and we sat in the back and I'm telling you, there wasn't a dry eye in the house. It was absolutely incredible. And, and the and the Holy Spirit moved in such a mighty way. It is bilingual, so if you don't know Spanish, there is still going to be a translator for everything. So you'll feel right at home. Amen? All right. Well, let's stand in this place. Let's stand in the house of the Lord and bless this service. And we're just going to go into worship. Sir? <laughs> yeah. Well, Father God, we thank you, Lord Jesus, for this beautiful Wednesday that you've given us, Lord. Today is the day that you've made, and we choose to rejoice. Holy Spirit, we pray that you just fall in this place tonight, God. We pray that you open the windows of heaven over Central Assembly right here, right now, Father God. Lord, we pray you pour out your spirit in the youth, in the children's department, in the nursery. Father God, on the security team, Lord, those watching the cameras, Father God, they feel your presence. Lord, we thank you for pouring out your spirit here in the sanctuary, Father God. Lord, we thank you, God, that you, you can be everywhere at one time. Lord, you're not just a here or there for a select few, God, but you're everything for everyone. Lord, we worship you and we praise you, Father. I thank you for what you're doing in this house, Father God, throughout the different ministries, God. And I pray that you bless them above and beyond, Father God. Lord, for the prime timers, Lord God, I, I thank you for revival breaking out. Lord God, in the grief share, Father, where people are being coming, Father God, and finding their freedom and finding their joy once more. Lord, we thank you for your love falling in that ministry, Father God. Lord, all the ministries that you have been blossoming in this church this last year, God, we pray that you allow it to grow, Father God, and, and be and multiply. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Y'all look at the words for a minute. For your mercy never fails me, and all my days I've been held in your hands. From the moment that I wake up until I lay my head, and I will sing of the goodness.
us healing in his name. I remember as a little girl being so scared from a nightmare and my grandmother just saying, speak the name of Jesus because every time you speak the name of Jesus, it changes the atmosphere. The, the, the demonic force that's trying to overtake you in that nightmare, it just flees in the name of Jesus. So whatever you're going through tonight, if you just speak the name of Jesus, his name is healing, his name is life, his name is salvation, his name is the blood that covers everything. His name drives out fear. So if you just speak his name tonight, amen.
Hallelujah. Come on, just tell him. I just want you to tell him that, Lord, you've been so faithful to me. And all, all my life, life you have been so, so good. Thank you, Jesus. With every breath that, that I, I am able, able. And I will sing of, of the goodness of God. Just one more time. Just one more time. All my life. Give him a hand clap of praise tonight. Lord, you've been so faithful. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, thank you, thank you. How many of you needed his goodness to chase you a little bit? <laughs> Amen. You know, even the young lions will, will get weary. Amen. But he never gets weary. And he'll keep her running. We, uh, we, we took, in the old church, actually the mid, middle-aged church, we took, uh, we took the song Desperado and we turned it into a Christian song. Now, y'all don't know Desperado. That's a worldly song. But uh, the Eagles were an amazing band. And uh, we, we sang it on a Sunday morning. <laughs> and you could tell the old drugs, they're grooving to it, you know. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Good to see you guys. Uh, I'm not supposed to be seeing you, but I'm glad I am. Hallelujah. Glad you're here. Uh, I don't know if you've been looking at the uh, at the Facebook, at the church page, but the, the team is having a, an awesome time. I, I texted Bethany the other day, and I asked her, I said, so, you know, after the first, uh, first meeting there on uh, Tuesday, I think it was, I said, so how'd it go? She said, a dream fulfilled. So it's, they're having a, an amazing, amazing time of ministry over there. I think they've got like 150, 160 girls. I think all told there's like 200 girls and women there. It's just, it's crazy. God is doing some really cool stuff. Amen. So uh, tonight I'm going to, this is kind of part four of the, for the good of the church. And I don't know if I'll go beyond tonight. Uh, we, you know, we certainly can. We could probably spend a, a four or five weeks digging into the, this one chapter. Um, because the, the, the gifts in chapter 12 is the, the manifestation of the Spirit. And we, we started this off looking at the, the purpose of the manifestation of the gifts is for what? It's for the good of the church. Look at your neighbor. Say, it's for your good. The Holy Spirit manifests himself in the meeting for your good. Come on. Now, the Holy Spirit is, you know, he is the third person of the Trinity. He is not an it. The gifts that he manifests, you can call him it, but he is a person. He's, the, he's, the, he's, the, he's God, and he manifests himself. Amen. That's what makes this thing alive. When you take him out of a service, out of a life, you have religion 
And I'm not sure you've got Christianity. Come on. Because Christianity is, a, is, a, is a, 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 a faith of resurrection. Everything God does, he does by resurrection. He makes dead things live. You, uh, my uh, brother Clinton would say, you take a, a, a preacher that is, uh, that is full of the Holy Ghost and on fire, you put him in a dead church, and he'll bring that church to life. And you put, that, you put, a, you put a preacher that is dead in a living church, and he'll kill that thing. Amen? You, you, we cannot divorce ourselves from the ministry of the Holy Spirit. You can't be saved without the Holy Spirit making Jesus real to you. Right? He is the one that, first of all, convinces you that you're a sinner in need of a Savior. J uh, Jesus said it in John 16. When he, the Spirit of truth, has come, he will convince men of sin, righteousness, and judgment that's coming. Amen. So how, I just want to ask, how many of you tonight are feeling a prompting of the Holy Spirit that, there's the, <laughs> that the end is getting a pretty, pretty close? You know, th this, is, th this is in the church, right? This is the Holy Spirit making truth alive to you right so we, we we never we never want to to minimize the work and the gifting of the holy spirit so let's read chapter 14 so anyway chapter 12 is the manifestation of the gift chapter 13 is the motivation of the gift first corinthians 13 y'all know what what's the theme of that book love 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 amen and what he is, you, 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 if you pull that chapter out of, of, the, of the chapter 12 and 13, then you, you really don't have the true sense of what the apostle is trying to communicate, right? If you pull chapter 12 out and you leave out chapter 13, you're going to hurt folks. There's a reason the apostle gets on this trap because the chapters here are added by men. Amen. Paul is writing a letter. And chapter 12, 13, and 14 is this one thought. He's talking about the gifts and the manifestation of the Holy Spirit. Then he's talking about the motivation. The motivation of every operation of the gift through a believer's life should be love. That should be the motive. I love you. It, it, it's why I'm in ministry. I'm in ministry because I love folks. I want to see people saved. I want to see them helped. I want to see them nudged along on their way to heaven. Amen? That's the motive that I'm a pastor. If, if there are men in pulpits today that are preaching because they're, they, they love to get in front of people and talk and they love to make money, then they're not, they're not biblical pastors. They're modern-day motivational speakers. Let's don't call it a church. Let's call it a club. Um, that's not my message tonight. And then chapter 14 is the administration. So if we've got the gifts and we've got the motive right, now let's talk about how should this look in my personal life, say personal, and in the corporate life, say corporate. So hold up your right hand. That's going to be this one right here. All right. So hold it up. That's your personal life. And hold up that other hand. That's that corporate life. Now, chapter, uh, the end of chapter 12, he talked about the body. My right hand is a little distance from my left hand, but they're part of the same body. That the, the manifestation of the gifts, some of them are for me personally, and some of it is for the church. And that's what he's going to be talking about. Verse 1, pursue love, yet desire earnestly. I'm sorry, 14, one, sorry, sorry about that. Chapter 14, verse 1. We went through 13 the other day. Pursue love and desire spiritual gifts. Stop right there. There's two verbs. What are the two verbs there? Pursue and desire. Right? You, that, that means you've got to do something. I want, that to, I want that to percolate just a minute. You must engage. You cannot come up here and stand there with your eyes closed and your hands lifted and your mouth shut. You've got to pursue and you've got to desire. And, we'll, and I'll get to my notes here in a minute. Let's just read. Desire, pursue love, desire earnestly spiritual gifts, but especially that you may what? Prophesy, right? So, so there's, there, there's a whole lot just in that one verse. That we are to pursue and we are to desire, amen, 
And, and, but we really want to focus on prophecy. And he's going to build out, and we're not going to read just every verse here, but he's going to build out in this chapter that, uh, that, that, that the, the whole purpose of us coming together as the body of Christ is so that we can encourage one another and edify one another and build one another up. Come on. That's, you know, that, that's, why, we, that's why we gather together. Otherwise, stay home. Amen? Yeah, well, I just, I come to hear you preach. Well, you're, I'm sorry for that. Come on. We come so that, that, that the Holy Spirit can manifest the presence of the living, resurrected Jesus in our midst. Amen? And, and by doing that, some will be encouraged, some will be edified, some will be corrected. Whoop, whoop, we love that part. All right, are, are y'all in? Yeah, let me just read through. Pursue love, desire spiritual gifts. The word gifts is in italics. But especially that you may prophesy. For he who speaks in a tongue does not speak to men, but to God. Stop right there. If you have a margin that you can write, right there at verse 2, you should write out that devotional or personal. That's his left hand. That's, that's when I'm speaking in tongues, when I'm praying in tongues, I'm not speaking to men, but I'm speaking to God. You've got to understand this. This is the, and he kind of bounces around, and, and, and it gets a little confusing. I'm going to try, to try to clear the air just a little bit here. He who speaks in a tongue does not speak to men, but to God. Look at the next part. For no one understands him. However, in the Spirit, he speaks mysteries. Okay? Now, there are those that, that, that trying to shoot down tongues. They'll talk about, well, in Acts chapter 2, every man heard the, the marvelous works of God in their own language. How many of you read that? And that's a fact because that was a sign gift. That was, that was unique for, the, for that group right there that they heard in their own language. Now, that, the Holy Spirit still does that, but that's not the primary move. That, that they heard, and people will... Try to argue about, well, was it a miracle of healing or uh, of hearing or a miracle of speaking? Who knows and who cares? <laughs> the disciples spoke in tongues and they, the, the, the onlookers thought they were drunk and strangers were hearing the marvelous works of God. That's a miracle of heaven right there. Amen. But when you pray in the Spirit, devotionally, when you speak in tongues, no man understands you. That's what the apostle just said. Howbeit you're speaking mysteries. You're talking to God. How many of you want to talk to God? Amen. Romans 8 will tell us that sometimes we just don't know how to pray as we should, but He, the Holy Spirit, who knows the mind of the Father, prays through us with groanings that are hard to be understood or hard to be uttered, or uh, translations will spin that off however they want to. But sometimes English doesn't cut it for me, and I've got to pray in the Holy Ghost. Come on. That is not, there's no regulation on that we're gonna i'm getting ahead of myself let's just read for he spit does not he speaks mysteries verse three but he who prophesies speaks edification exhortation and comfort to men he who speaks in a tongue edifies himself that's personal but he who prophesies edifies the church i wish you all spoke with tongues but even more that you prophesied for he who prophesies is greater in the church, I'll add, than he who speaks with tongues, unless indeed he interprets that the church may receive edification. Amen. Father, help us tonight to understand your heart and your desire for men and women to be filled with your Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, come in here. Help me to teach. But God, help more than that. Help us to understand your will and your purpose for us in this hour and this day. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So what I want to do tonight is divide between the, devo uh, the devotional gift and the ministry gift of tongues. Now, your background likely did not prepare you <clears throat> for what God's trying to accomplish today. How many of you would agree with that? <laughs> Man, you know, my, back my background was pretty rough. Now, some of you were raised in church, but even if you were raised in church, it didn't adequately prepare you for this day. Come on, we're living, this is a new day. <laughs> I, I've been in this thing 46 years, and, uh, you know, I, I, the preachers could preach about the rapture, and I'd go out there and look up, see if Jesus was coming. I thought the, the near, his coming must be, must be so near because of the preaching. 
But today it's the news that makes me go outside and look up saying, surely I'm going to see him coming in the clouds after what I've just heard, what I've just seen in the news. Are you listening to me? Totally different. It's a different season. We used to just talk about some of the calamities that were going to come on the earth. Now we're, we're experiencing them. We're witnessing them. We've got people in our own nation calling death to America. Now, the, the, the Iranians have been saying that for 45, 50 years. I've been watching it. On the, but now they're here in our, uh, on college campuses calling for death to America. It's a, new, it's a different day. And your upbringing did not equip you and prepare you for what you're facing right now. Come on. So, <clears throat> so you're, we're not ready. We can say it this way. We're not ready for what God is going to try to accomplish in us. We may have been a very spiritual person in the past. We may have been, have been a cultural Christian. And so when God begins to reveal himself or, or to, to plant direction or thoughts in our minds, we may think that, well, it was the, the pizza that we ate last night. But God is after something in you. Amen? He's, he's trying to create with you and, within you and me a new nature, a new way of looking things and a new way of interacting with things, a nature that is super to the natural of man. He's trying to create in us a nature that will right the wrongs in our community. So as I said in this, at the beginning of this study, the greatest need of our time is the need for an increase in spiritual capacity of people in the church. We need more of God. Amen? And the, 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 and the key to increasing spiritual capacity is desire. We got we to gotta realize how bad it is and realize how far the church is from where God needs her to be in this moment. Don't you think God needs some Holy Ghost filled Christians that are storming this, walking up and down these sidewalks and Walmart and HEB parking lots and, and, and sitting at the bank talking about Jesus? <laughs> it was so funny. I was at the bank to make a deposit today, and Miss Cindy here, she was, I, I saw her back, I said, that, that sounds like Cindy, and this little bank teller there, she, me and Tammy have witnessed her a hundred times, trying to get her, get her, get her to come to church, and, and anyway, so her and Cindy are, boy, they're going in a spiritual conversation, and they, neither one of them have a clue I'm there, I'm doing my deal, I'm just kind of listening, and Cindy says, uh, you know, well, you need to go to church. And uh, she said, well, and she starts telling her about the church and telling her about this conference she's going to go to and just talking to her. And then the teller saw me and she said, well, there's a pastor right there. I said, yep, I'm her pastor. <laughs> her wise got about that big. <laughs> Amen. But we need Holy Ghost filled men and women walk in the streets of this city that have been empowered by the Holy Spirit and are ready at a, at a moment's notice to lay hands on the sick and see them recover, to cast out devils, amen, to open the eyes of the blind, to just to let the power of God flow through us. This moment demands a Holy Spirit filled church. It's, it, he, you know, we used to, I guess, I, I never did, man. As soon as I got in, in Pentecost, I never saw him and his ministry as optional. I, I, you know, I've got to have him. I'm telling you, I, I can't do any of this. this a, a church cannot be, cannot flow and function without him. We've got to have him. So the point is, <clears throat> the point being that, that you, you can have more of God than you're currently walking in. And it is the will of God that you have more of him than you're walking in. It is his will. So we cannot allow our past experience to dictate our future spiritual capacity. I, I wrote about that many mothers giving birth to their, to their second child can't believe that they could ever love another one. Come on, mamas, that have more than one or two babies. You know that, you know, man, it's like, oh, ha, me and Tammy had this conversation. You know, Tiffany was our everything. You know, we watch this little girl. She's now, I think, two or three years old, and here comes Allison. And, and uh, we, we actually, how is this going to work? We're going to have to work really hard to, to love Allison. <laughs> Honey, we didn't have to work to love you. She, she's got the middle child syndrome. i got to make sure I come back with that. It was, but as soon as that baby began to cry, oh, there was such a love. Come on, right? You know, we, 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 you know, there's, we, we wonder, you know, how can we, 
you know, how can we have any more of God? What I've got right now is so wonderful. And it is. But it's so much better. Come on, there's more. Say more. There's more. He wants you to have more. He's not feeding it like a little eyedropper. He's up there waiting for you to desire and to pursue. Amen. <clears throat> so, you know, you, you don't th a mother doesn't think she could ever love another one until the experience. And, you, and you, you, if you've never been filled with the Holy Spirit, you're sitting there thinking, how could salvation be any greater than it is right now? Until you experience it. <laughs> Amen. And there is no, there's no substitute for experience. And if the, so if desire is the key to increasing spiritual capacity and God made the promise to fill believers with the Holy Spirit and fire, then I said this the other day, then we've got to begin asking the hard questions. Why am I not filled? And I'm going to say number one starts off with desire. Part, partly because churches don't encourage and preach the baptism in the Holy Ghost like they did when I was young. And partly because you're just not hungry for it, because you, 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 you don't apply. You, don't, you, you think maybe you came forward in a meeting or something and you didn't receive. And so you think, well, it's just not for me. Honey, it is for you. And it is for your children, and it is for your children's children. That's Joel. I'm quoting the Word of God. As many as the Lord our God shall call. Peter said it. It is for all of you. And in Acts 2, 38, he will say, repent, be baptized, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Amen. All right. So let's look at this. Number, my first point, you can speak. Say, I can speak. Verse 1 uh, in chapter 14. I'm going to just jump around here, guys. Follow me. Pursue love and desire spiritual gifts, but especially that you may prophesy. How many of you can prophesy? I see three hands went up. Okay, come on. If I'm, if, if I'm, preaching, if I'm not preaching the truth, run. But if I'm preaching the truth of God's word, then you need to accept it and you need to embrace it. Amen. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Not might, but shall. I can prophesy because the Holy Spirit lives within me. Verse 21. In the law it is written with men of other tongues and other lips, I will speak to this people. Who's he going to speak through? Me. How's he going to do it? Other tongues. Amen. Verse 26, how is it, brethren, when you come together, each of you has a psalm, has a teaching, has a tongue, has a revelation, has an interpretation. Let all things be done for edification. Verse 39, therefore, brothers, desire earnestly to prophesy, and look at that last phrase, do not forbid to speak with tongues. Amen. So the apostle Paul is definitely not saying tongues are bad. He is trying to, tr trying to correct some theology in a, in a church that is spun completely out of control. And as I said, Acts 2.38, you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Amen. So you can receive it. I want to I wanna just I wanna hit that hard. God wants you to be filled with His Spirit. Amen. You get saved, you sh we should immediately begin to lay hands on you and ask God to fill you with the Holy Spirit. Amen. You need to hear that the, the, the disciples of John, when they, they met Paul in Acts 19, he says, have you, the first thing he asked him, have you received the Holy Spirit since you believe? Now, now, let me, why would he ask that question? He saw there was something not quite complete. He's like, man, if you're, if, boy, what, what would he think if he come into the American church? <laughs> he wouldn't ask if we'd received the Holy Spirit. He'd ask, have you been saved? <laughs> Amen. But, but, you know, because the apostle Paul, this is the apostolic heartbeat. The apostle wants the fullness of God in every human being. Now, I understand not every human being is going to press in and desire and push and receive, but it is the uh, apostolic heart that says, I want every man, woman, boy, and girl to receive the fullness of God. So he saw those disciples of John. Have you received the Holy Spirit since you believe? We don't even know anything about the Holy Spirit. Well, then where was your baptism? Well, repentance, John's baptism. He said, John baptized you with water, telling you there's a better one coming. Amen. He laid, they baptized, laid hands on them, and they begin to speak in tongues and prophesy. It is the will. Say, it is God's will that I be filled. 
Say it again. It is God's will that I be filled. All right. Number two, the regulation of tongues is the regulation on the gift as in operating in the church and not on devotional tongues. Look at, uh, let, let, first of all, I, I hit this two weeks ago or, or second time, time before last that I spoke on, on a Wednesday night. In, in chapter 12, verse 28, he said, do all speak with tongues? And the, the obvious inference is no. And the reason, the reason it is no is because he's talking about the ministry gift. Right? He's talking about the gift of tongues, not the, bat, not, not the devotional tongues. Right, <clears throat> So one guy said it this way, where we cannot function, he does function. Amen. What we can't do, he does. <clears throat> and so Paul will say, he that speaks in tongues edifies himself. He that prophesies edifies the church. We read prophecy edifies, exhorts, and comforts the church. But tongues edifies the individual. Amen. And Jude, he says, build yourself up on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Spirit, in the Holy Ghost, praying in tongues. It, it's, and, and church, listen, if you've been filled with the Holy Spirit, I want to encourage you to pray in tongues daily. Come on, pray, pray in tongues. Well, I'm just waiting on the gift of God. Do you think God wants your faith built up? Or is God sitting up in heaven saying, I don't think they need any faith today. No, no. So he encourages you. He will give the utterance if you will desire and pursue. If you'll desire and pursue, he will fill you. Desire, oh God, give us a, a, an unsatisfied, one preacher said it this way, an unsatisfied satisfaction. There's got to be something in my heart that just wants to go after God every day. I need him. You know, it's, it's like you, you, you look at some folks my age now. I, I, used to, I used to look at old people and wonder how... How in the world? I'm an I, our one now. I, how in the world did they stay on fire? How do, they're, they're old men. They're old women. My goodness, they're 50 years old. And they're still on fire for Jesus. How'd they do that? By desire and pursuit. By desire and pursuit. They're going after God. They're, 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 they're try, they're, they're, they have a burden for the, for the lost. They don't want to see anybody go to hell, and they don't want to see anybody in the church miss out on God's best. So, in the, so, so there is, and, and we're fixing to get into some scripture here, and you're going to see that Paul kind of jumps back and forth from the ministry gift of tongues that, that is necessary, it needs to be interpreted, right? That the regulation is on the gift of tongues in the church, not on devotional tongues. The devotional tongues, it's for me. I'm just to pray to myself. You will, you will hear me, amen, when I'm, when I'm preaching or when I'm in worship. I am, I am sometimes I'll just, I'll just yield to the Holy Ghost and I'll pray in tongues. That's, there's no regulation against that. Now, if, if, if what he's saying when he says, you know, if, 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 a, if you all in the, in the, in the meeting, because he, he specifies that, if you all in the meeting, when you come together, everybody's speaking in tongues. Somebody's going to come in here, and they're not going to get anything from the service because they don't understand it, right? They're going to say you're all mad, right? But if, if, if they come in and everybody's prophesying, which that happens around here quite routinely, amen, they're going to, then they're going to, they're going to, they're, the secrets of their hearts are going to be revealed, and it's going to be a wonderful thing. But then they'll say, you know, but when you couple tongues with interpretation, Amen. Then, then it does. It has the same effect as prophecy. Amen. It, it's it's working. And often, and this not in the scripture. This is in practice because we're, the chapter fourteen is about administration, and that's what I'm trying to talk about. And just kind of using this as a segue <laughs> to a little. Uh, just thank God we're not having to bring order and discipline right now. But a lot of us that grew up, you know, thirty years ago in Pentecost. You know, the, the music would get just the right fevered pitch and somebody would stand up and just blurt out, you know, and somebody would try to interpret it. And we'd call that tongues and interpretation. And the apostle Paul said, hold on, hold on. The, the, the spirit of the prophet is subject to the prophet. That, that, you know, you don't just get so over, overwhelmed with God that you have to interrupt the, the, the worship or interrupt the preaching. Amen. Amen. You can, you, you can just yield to the Spirit, amen, by walking by a consistent devotional life. When you pray in the Spirit daily, you're going to find it gets very easy to walk in the Spirit. 
And so, when, so what we do, how we practice it here, when God, God has given something to you, normally by the time you get it, I'm looking for you. <laughs> I, I know it. Sometimes I have the interpretation, but I'm sensing God is about to speak, and I'm looking. So all I need you to do is kind of catch my eye and go, because I'm already looking for you. You understand? That's how, the, that's how this thing works. <clears throat> so you come up here, and we want to get you on the microphone. Why? Because we want other. If, if God is speaking, we're going we're gonna to take heed of what he's saying. Come on. Uh, it, it grieved my heart to know him. One of my daughters was, you know, when we left our home church and everybody's kind of scattered, you know, and they're, they're looking for a spirit-filled church. And I'm way down here and they can't go to church with daddy forever. And so uh, one of my daughters went to a church and, the, you know, the, they, were, they were in worship and there came a message in tongues and interpretation. And, you know, she told me, she said, I'm telling you, God just came in. And the pastor got up, told a joke and took up an offering. Yeah. And we wonder why the gifts are not operable in the church. Because when he speaks, we don't honor him. So in our church, we have order. When you have a message in tongues, you come up, I'm going to get you on the mic. You have the interpretation, I'm going to get you on the mic so that others can hear it, so that everyone can hear what God is saying, and then we're going to judge it. Not judge you. Hello? Do I need to say that again? We're going to judge the word, not you. We're going to discern. We're going to make sure. Is God speaking? Was, was this of God? And we're not going to call you out and rebuke you and tell you, you missed God. You were all wrong. No, that's not. That, does, that, does that fit the 13th chapter? No, then that would be out of order. Come on. Right? So, so we're just going to let this thing flow decently in order. Right? Now, what, what happens a lot of times is that when someone gives a message in tongues, it's usually... Man, this thing is, is ramping up. It's, I mean, this, this, this jet engine is running down the, the, down the, the runway and about to, the, the elevators are starting to lift, right? And God is stirring somebody up with a prophecy, and they get up and give the prophecy in place of the interpretation. Come on. That's why we just need to be patient and wait. You see me, I'll wait. I can pretty much every time there's a, there's a message in tongues, I could give that interpretation that's the, that's the office that I'm in. But I wait because I know if God's speaking to me, he is talking to someone else in the body. And my heart and my desire is that you learn to flow in the gifts. Because what good is it doing you if the man behind the pulpit operates in all the gifts and y'all just sit there and listen? It's not going to do anything for this community. But I need you to be fluent in the gifts. I need you to be yielded to the Holy Spirit. Amen? All right. Any, any questions on that? I know there's questions. Who's got the first question on that part? Come on. You're not going to freak me out. If I don't know it, I'll tell you I don't know it. Oh, boy, you bunch of dishonest people. Go ahead, brother. Mm-hmm. Right? Okay. So he, what he's saying is that, that you know, uh, Paul said, let everything be done decently and in order. He's in the, and, you know, the un, un, uh, un, unexperienced, there's a, a different word that's used here, but those that are not fluent in the gifts, they watch this and they say, well, it doesn't sound like it's in order to me. Everybody's praying in the Spirit. Right? And and you have anything to comment on that? Or you're asking? They don't speak in tongues. But, and so it's foreign to them. Right? You know, what David was doing, dancing before the Lord, was out of order to, to Micah, or Ma Michael, or Michelle, whatever you say her name. Like I said, I'm like Pat. I went to that Berean school. They didn't tell us how to pronounce these words. <laughs> but, but... Uh, you know, Michelle criticized David's worship, and as a result, she was barren. Come on, and and, and anyway, we that, that meaning there was no intimacy between her and the king, and that's what typically happens when people take shots at it. But we need to have an answer for that, right? So uh, it, it, it's also like you know, we'll also get criticized in this church for allowing women to speak in the pulpit, right? 
Well, the Bible says the woman's not to usurp the authority of a man. Well, guess what? If I, if I give them permission, she's not usurping authority. If I give permission, it's decent and in order. Now, again, the regulation is not on devotional tongues. The regulation is on the manifestation of the gift of tongues. And Paul is saying, look, we, the whole service doesn't need to be a tongue service. But yet he spends this entire chapter. I was going to count before service. I didn't do it. How many? You can do that when you go home. Count how many times tongues are in that 14th chapter. It's a, it's a bunch. You know, and it's like, okay, well, if it's not about tongues, why are you talking so much about it? Because that's where the questions arise. And why do the questions arise with, and, 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 the, and the controversy around tongues? Why is that a deal? Because it's used? They're already scared. Why are they scared of it? Yeah. Right. I speak and the Spirit gives utterance. It, it is, which is why we're teaching this tonight, right? The, the reason that people are all freaked out about tongues is because it is the only one of the gifts that was never operated in the Old Covenant. You see prophecy, you see words of wisdom and knowledge, you see these old prophets flowing in everything but tongues. Tongues is, 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 is the church's uh, uh, significant gift, right? And why is that? Because it is the promise of the Father that, that Jesus, listen, this is what required Jesus to go to heaven. He said, I've got to go or the promise won't come. Has he been resurrected? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Then the promise is here. Amen. And people, it, they reject it because it's supernatural. It's a, it's a, it sounds like a bunch of gibberish to me. And let me tell you something. There's a lot of folks going around talking in tongues. It is gibberish. It's coming right from their head. Amen. But, 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 that, but, this, but there's also a lot of people that call themselves Christians that are living like the devil. They ain't no more saved than, than, you know, than a jack-in-the-box. So don't, we don't throw the gift out because of abuse. We correct abuse, and we, and we stand for the truth. Let me tell you something. When I was born again, I was delivered. I was born delivered. Glory to God. I was born again, delivered by the power of God. I, I, I quit. I, immediately alcoholism left me. I had a lot of stuff I had to battle. But there was a power on the inside of me that began that sanctifying process. Amen. <clears throat> if you've been living for God for 30 years and you hadn't gone through that, you're still holding on to stuff you had 30 years ago, I'm going to question whether you've really been born again or not. Am I sweet? Uh, come on, do you love me? I, I don't want to be too hard tonight. It's Wednesday night. <clears throat> so people, uh, rather people reject that because it's like, well, but it's, it's not, it might look out of order because their order is to sit on their hands and listen to the man in the pulpit. Right, and that's not not how it, how it worked in the early church. Come on, it's not how it worked in the early church. Now uh, it did one time. They Paul got to preaching so long, God fell out of the window. <coughs> if that's why we just have one story here, because I'm a long-winded preacher. <coughs> so uh, you know, so so tongues in the church, the ministry gift must be coupled with interpretation, right? And, and you'll see, you know, uh, man, when back in the early days when this thing was popping and everybody was just, man, it was cool, and, and there would be four, five, six people come up, Pastor, I've got a word, Pat, and, I, and I'm like, okay, share with me what you got. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm filled. It's not that you have, you're not hearing from God. I've got to discern what is the word for the church for this moment. Now, you're watching out there, it looks like it, pandemonium looks like it's out of order, but it is very much in order because the Holy Spirit is in control, and I'm, I'm kind of the, the choir director here, right? Yeah, it looks, it looks crazy, right? But uh, yeah, it's life. life. Life is messy. Have you ever been in a delivery room? I've seen, <laughs> I've seen five born. I ain't never going to see another one. That's enough for me. Hallelujah. All right. <clears throat> the gift of interpretation, uh, you know, is, 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 it, 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 it's, there's a guy said this, and I just kind of wrote down some of the stuff. He said, it's for the now. It's a word for now. It's not, 
you know, either prophecy or tongues and interpretation is not something that we need to, to record and, and that govern the life of the church for the next 30 years. That's a word for now, right? And, uh, you know, so typically, you know, it, it's typically it's because the 13th chapter uh, that we learn, we in the, in, typically because in the 13th chapter we learn that, that Paul says that we prophesy in part. Right, we don't have a, you know. So when somebody prophesies over you, that they, they're not clairvoyant. Now there's some of that in the church. Just because somebody reads your mail, don't you? Don't, you've got to have the discerning of spirits. You got to know because there because there's a lot of there's a lot of spooky stuff going on in churches in the name of the Lord. <clears throat> but uh, because of the thirteenth chapter tells us we prophesy in part, that's why we need the gift of interpretation so that we can discern what, what is God's will for us today right now. The, th uh, the third point I want to bring out tonight before we get too, too deep is not to quench the Spirit. In 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 16, 1 Thessalonians 5, 16, put it up here. Rejoice always. You know what that says? Jump up and down, spin about wildly. That's what rejoice means. Next verse. Pray without ceasing. Are you seeing something? There, little, just these are significant verses. Rejoice, pray without ceasing. Hit, hit us again. In everything, give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. Do not quench the Spirit. And there's something about the Holy Spirit, the person, the third person of the Trinity. He can be yielded to, He can be resisted. He can be grieved. Paul will say that in somewhere. I said, don't grieve the Holy Spirit of God. He can be quenched, meaning, you know, people say, because these very folks, you know, well, it can't be of God because it never happens in my church. That's why. But why do pastors quench the Holy Spirit? I can help you because it's scary. <laughs> when this stuff gets to spinning out of control, it's like, you know, well, how can I, you know, I mean, because I, I tick people off. I know some people that they're not, they don't have the right motivation and they come out. I've got a word from God and I'm just, you know, I'm not, I'm, I'm not saying they didn't hear from God. I'm just saying it's not for right now. And they get offended and they never come back. I'm sorry. That's order. Right. And, and it, it's, it's, it's weaker pastors that don't want to deal with that, that they're like, I just, I just rather do everything myself right? Let me tell you, when God first led us into this about uh, 17 years ago now, it freaked me out. Uh, and I've told you the story. I'm up there playing the bass. And man, that, I mean, this thing had been going on for like three months. I hadn't preached. And I'm like, God, I need to, I need to get a hold of this. He said, you do that and you're going to do it by yourself. And I'm like, okay, it's yours. I'm going to keep my hands off of it. Amen. So it, it's, it's intimidating. And that's why some people don't really that they don't really pursue and seek the gifts of the Spirit because it is intimidating. It's because it's super to the natural of man. You fear what you don't understand. Absolutely. Absolutely. I, I, I have a couple of, couple of points on that before we leave. Uh, <clears throat> so uh, um, when we're talking about, uh, about control, right, Leadership, that this 14th chapter is about administrating the gifts. And so how do we do it? To, we have to administrate or, and I hate to use the, use the word control, but we have to control the operation. That's what Paul is saying. In the latter part of this chapter, he gives, it, it starts actually in verse 26 is when he starts talking about the administration in the church. What is the outcome then, brethren? When you assemble, what's he talking about? When you come to church. Each one has a psalm, has a teaching, has a revelation, has a tongue, an interpretation. Let all be done for edifying. So, it, you know, if, if they're going to do that, we're going to have to submit to the leader. If anyone speaks in a tongue, it should be by two or three, at the most three, and each in turn, and let one interpret. Now, there is no answer for the question that you have on that verse. Is that two or three messages in tongues or two or three people? There is no answer. Theologians have beat that horse to death, and I'm, I, I ride horses. I don't beat them to death, so I'm not even going to go there. It, it, you know, 
Tammy and I, we, we used to divide that as, you know, there should be like three messages in back off. And so we're, man, in the early days of my evangelistic ministry, Tammy and I were flowing in the gifts and, and we got in this church and man, we just, we got all caught up and, and, uh, you know, we, we probably gave, you know, there were three or four messages in tongues and two or three prophecies and we're just rocking. And we went home so grieved because we, we were so rigid in that. Now I preached, it was still in order. But yet there was, a, there was an excessive amount of, 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 of freedom and liberty right there, I guess I should say, that I took that maybe I should have regulated a little bit. Come on. Because this stuff can get a little incestuous. We all start prophesying over each other and, 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 and speaking. You know, The gifts are wonderful to encourage and edify the body. But after that, we need to get out in the community. Come on. They work best out there. Anyway, I'm going to leave that alone. So... <clears throat> So he goes on, he's talking about the administration. If, if anyone speaks in a tongue, two or three, each in turn, let one interpret. But if there's no interpreter, let him keep silent in the church and let him speak to himself and to God. Amen. So what is he saying there? You ought to pray in the Holy Spirit in, in, in the gift to yourself and God, not just devotional gift. Amen. How do you learn to prophesy? Well, guess what? You pray in the Spirit, and when the prophetic word comes and it's just you, you drive down the word and you begin to yield to that. Man, when I was a young man, before I got filled with the Spirit, and I'd hear people talk about that. You know, this one lady said, you can pray in tongues anywhere. You can. I pray in tongues washing the dishes. I said, that's blasphemy. <laughs> I'm like, you, this, is, this is holy. You pray in tongues in the church. No. You build up yourself on your most holy faith. Somebody, somebody the other day honked at me. They said, you were just talking to somebody on the phone, and I, that was me honking at you. I'm like, I wasn't talking to somebody. I'm praying. I look, look like, a, like a madman, but I'm praying in the Holy Ghost. I'm building up my, my, my most holy faith. Amen. So, uh, so in the leadership, the leadership and the administration of the gifts, there are some things. If we, if we control the gifts from fear, we're going to quench them. If we control the, grief, the gifts through unbelief, we're going to grieve or offend the Holy Spirit. If we control the, the service through spiritual authority, amen, then we will release a power from on high in the service. Come on. I, I'm telling you, it, it's, I, I never, I, I, you know, Scott Kuhn really helped us, but this thing was going, you know, before I met him, it actually is how, how we met uh, Scott Kuhn. And he, he and Ellen came and really helped us understand the release of the Holy Spirit, how to flow in the gifts. And it's a beautiful thing. It, and so let me, I, I, I don't want to start rambling here. So <clears throat> let, me, let me just read through the rest of this chapter, and then I'm going to wrap this up. Okay, but uh, let's see here. Verse 29 of 14. And let two or three prophets speak, and let the others pass judgment. How many times do we do that? Not here. I'm talking about in other churches. We do that here, don't we? When the things are going, people are coming up, they've got a word from the Lord. Give it. Got a word from the Lord. Give it, right? So we're, we're, giving, we're giving place. We're allowing people to, to release what the Spirit of God is putting in them. And then we have to judge. Is that, is that, and you'll see me. I'll turn. I'm like, you know, is that witnessing to you? Is, that, is God speaking to you? Then respond, right? Uh, let the others pass judgment. But if a revelation, here's where it gets wild. If a revelation is made to another who is seated, let the first one keep silent. Man, don't be interrupting me when I'm preaching. <laughs> I was fixing to come back there to you, <laughs> unless you're Pat Garrett. <laughs> but come on, Brother Pat, I'll be preaching under the anointing, and that revelation starts flowing, and what I mean, it, and, and you, you get a word, right? You hear. Folks, this, isn't, this, is, this is Bible. This is how the church service is supposed to flow and function. And the unlearned, Brother John, are going to look at this and go, well, that's out of order. Not according to the Word of God. It's, not. it's out of order according to modern church life, but not according to the Word of God. According to the Word of God, this is, a, is an interactive thing. You're not coming to a movie show. Because my old, uh, uh, the old uh, membership cards from Assembly of God Churches said you go to hell if you do that. I'm sorry. <laughs> Talk to me.
Yes, this is my first point. Brother, so when you get to preaching about the Lord's presence and that revelation that comes to each person in our heart, it's just, I, I don't know how they would say any of that stuff. If there's such an expectation, I, I don't care if they're singing or worshiping, there, that, that Holy Spirit, you said that I wish I'd got the microphone over here. He wants a gift to this church. Yes. And out of all those gifts, we operate as one people. As one body. Many members, but we're one people. Yes, sir. And those gifts. And, and, the, and, the, and the detriment I feel is because nobody like me teaches it to us. Yes, sir. They, that's, they, they teach that. They preached about that every day when me and you were coming in this church. Yes, sir. Never preached much. A second coming and baptism in the Lord. I was going to say, it's the three messages we heard. Get saved, look for the rapture, that's get right. filled with the Holy Ghost. That's about all we heard. <laughs> when we come together, that it's serious. There's yeah. So, so, so here's the thing, Pat. And, and here's what happens in actuality, Okay. I'm preaching under the anointing of the Spirit of God, and God starts stirring you up. Now, I'm, I'm not speaking faith. I know two or three of you, at least, get stirred up when I'm preaching. I can't tell about the rest of you because y'all don't respond. Now, that's not a rebuke. I'm just helping you understand. But here's what happens. I'm preaching under the anointing. Pat and I have got a relationship. He's got a relationship with God. That thing's going both directions. And he gets up and he knows I'll sit him down if I don't if 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 it's if it's out of order. But according to this verse right here, if, if God reveals something to the others, let the first back off. Is that Bible? Is that what I just read to you? Show me another church somewhere that's doing that. You're not going to find them because the pastor's too intimidated to allow it. And I'm not being critical or mean. I'm preaching the truth. And it's why we've got the hell in our communities, though we've got Assembly of God churches on every corner. It's why the Assembly of God church had a, a, a male strip pole up here on, in the platform in a men's meeting because they got to have something because they don't have the power of the Holy Ghost. When the, when the manifestation of the gift is here, you don't have to need anything else to entertain folk. God, people are going to be attracted to him. I don't want them attracted to this building. We're going to make it nice. We're going to make sure it smells good. Amen. We're going to try to keep it comfortable in here. But he is the attraction. And if, he if it becomes anything else, Ichabod is written over this thing. We'll go on and do our program, but he won't be a part of it. I'm preaching Sunday morning on the, 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 the proof of a candlestick church. When I came here, amen, uh, 18 years ago, I asked the Lord. I, I'm like, you know, I just, I was intimidated to be here. I never, I never, you know, but besides the folks that are left here, there's a bunch of mean spotted spiders in this house. <laughs> we had 23 people and four clicks. <laughs> But I saw the people were wounded and grieved, and I'm like, God, and I did. I, I remember it was probably my third or fourth service of preaching for you folks. On a Sunday night, I got over, down on this altar, and I said, Lord, is this a candlestick church? I'm, I'm nearly 50 years old, and I don't have any time to waste. The Spirit of God spoke to me that night. He said, Brad, this is a candlestick church, and I've brought you here to set things in order. I'm like, all right, if, if, you, if that's your call, I'm committed. My girls would call me, Dad, you can't keep up this, this, uh, uh, this, 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 this tempo, this schedule, right? So I'm, I'm driving 70 miles one way to work. I was doing cowboy ministry over there once a month. I'm preaching here. Every, every, you know, and I said, girls, there is a grace on me to do this. And I said, the minute he lifts his hand, I'm out of here. I said, but as long as he's called me here, I, I'm going to obey what he's doing. And I'm telling you, when I made that commitment to him, there was a river that opened up in this house, folks. We, we, we had gone up to about 40, 45 people, but that one Sunday morning, I, I'll never forget it. God began to move, and people began to go to one another and ask for forgiveness and make restitution and rebuild relationships. And I mean, that river started. I would brought in prophets and brought in singers and brought in all kinds of people trying to, trying to manufacture the move of God. But it wasn't until we, the church, got right with him and got right with each other, the river 
river opened up, my God, and the thing began to flow. And I, I mean, in the space of two or three months that I never preached a service, this thing went from like 45 to near 100 people, just, just backsliders coming in, being drawn by the Spirit of God, said, I got to get saved. I, I watched a lady come over here. She'd come to this altar. Uh, she come and got saved. Nobody prayed for her. I'm up here playing the bass. And her friend that brought her said, she got saved. Said, how'd she get saved? The pastor didn't pray for her. She come the next week, and I'm like, I got to get over there to her. Couldn't get over there to her. And uh, she went to, to her, her work that week testifying how God delivered her from a five-year addiction to, to prescription drugs. Nobody laid hands on her. The next week, I'm like, I, has she come over here? I'm getting a hold of her. I threw that bass down, told the piano player, keep playing that piano. I went over there, laid hands on her. God marvelously filled her with the Holy Ghost. I'm telling you, friends, if we will have a desire... He will provide the river. The only impediment to the move of God is that we won't, we won't get the dam out of the way and let the river flow. Whew, Jesus, I want to see every believer fulfilled and filled with the Holy Ghost. Amen? I wasn't going to preach. I was going to teach, but that's better. I like that. I'm a preacher. So... <clears throat> Yeah, we, we really, so, so uh, we, we, we like the part about don't be speaking in tongues in the church, but yet we throw verse 34 out. Let the women keep silent in the churches, for they are not permitted to speak, but let them subject themselves, just as the law also said. Yeah. <laughs> You got to understand, but but yet in the, the same book will tell us about the prayer meeting that uh, uh, Lydia had, that produced a mighty revival in that city. It talks about deaconesses. It talks about women. Amen. So so there's got to be something that the apostle is writing about here to the church in Corinth. Remember, this is a he is saying a, 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 in reference to the letter you wrote me. And he's going down the line dealing with these things. The Corinthian church was a church full of, of sexual immorality, full of, 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 of charismania. And he's like, look, look, you know, how in the world can you have this kind of sexual immorality in the church? He said, throw that offending member out. Whew, that's rough. Ask that just a minute. Throw that out. How in the world can, can, can you know, you know all, all, you, you, just, just tell the women to be quiet. That was for that church. That was, that was a situational thing. Because all through the New Testament, you'll see Paul's always talking to women that are obvi have obvious leadership and influence in the body of Christ. Go ahead and ask me. What do you got? Typically. Well, when you read the Apostle Paul... In, at the, in, just, just read the last chapter of all of the, uh, the, the pastoral epistles. And you see, he doesn't talk about it much, but he talks about this. He said, tell Eunice and what, what's her name, get along. <laughs> That's really what he said, right? So it's entirely possible. Yes, sir. Oh, I'm sorry. I was getting over here close hoping you could, I need to turn this microphone on. So she said, it, it, and this is a woman. This is not your pastor. Pastor did not say this. Uh, but that, you know, it, it could be he's telling women just quit gossip, be quiet and quit gossiping because women are typically given to cutting each other up. Yes. Right. So there was there was there was separate. You know, they would, the women would be here, the men would be here, and the woman would be hollering over there at her husband. And Paul will say in this chapter, ask your husband at home, quit, quit disturbing Remember, the thing is, is we're trying to keep the body edified, and we're not trying to create confusion, right? We want to keep the body edified. And so what Pat was saying is that when I start preaching Sunday, you know, and, and, or, and it was getting up to preach, and all of a sudden the Spirit of God just started welling up inside of him, and he comes up, and he gave the first, the Scripture and the first point that I had written in my message, right? So that was definitely in order. Now, if he had come and headed off and, and, and started talking about the mark of the beast, I would have had to kind of, okay, thank you, Pat, go sit down. Let me get back into my message, right? Because that would have been, that would have been a wrong use of his liberty. 
Are we good? All right. Let's finish reading this. Uh, <clears throat> verse 37. If anyone thinks he is a prophet or spiritual, let him recognize that the things that I'm writing to you are the Lord's command. But if anyone does not recognize this, he is not recognized. Therefore, my brothers, desire earnestly to prophesy. And what? And do not forbid to speak in tongues. But let all things be done properly and in an orderly manner. Right? So, so the order in the church is this, that whoever is leading the service is, is the one you need to go to. Right? Right? Whoever's leading the service, if I'm not here, uh, you know, then and you have a word, come, come, to, come to the one. And, and it, it, if he's not up here, maybe you know, Pastor Emmanuel is sitting over here. Go to Pastor Emmanuel. Say, Pastor, I think I've, I've got a word, and he'll discern. You know, how's that fitting with the flow? Sometimes it may not have anything to do with my message, but it has to do with the flow of the service. Man, we've been on this song for the last 10 minutes and people are, are just, they're getting ministered to and God is bringing a word of encouragement or exhortation in that moment. Come on, my message that I've, I've prepared is not as important as what God's going to speak to this body at that moment. You see, the, the gifts of the Spirit are for now. When I'm preaching the word, amen, we'll record that. That can be good. You can take that, take them notes and use them for years. The, the manifestation of the gift is for this body for that moment does that help you i i, I want to help you because there's and i know there are people watching this that that have never been filled with the spirit they've got all kinds of questions about it and and you just got to understand 12 13 and 14 he is he is a god of love he he's not here to freak you out will it freak you out the first time you experience it absolutely if it doesn't it worries me I mean, when somebody comes in all tatted up and, and, you know, you can tell that they ain't never been in church and they come in there and sit down and they pop in their gum like ain't nothing going on, I get worried. I mean, they can come in here looking like, you know, they, man, they, they're, they're going to cut your head off. But you can see a, you can see a, a fear and a trembling come on. I'm like, man, go Jesus. <laughs> hey, man, you know, so here's why we do church the way we do. And I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stop. We do things the way we do for this one reason. And that is because if, if someone comes in this room that is not saved, they might forget what I preach. I'll guarantee you, I don't remember the sermon that was preached the day I got saved. I know who preached it. I don't know a word that he said. I didn't hear what he said because God the Holy Ghost was talking to me. Right? And if we have a move of the Spirit in this church, they come in here. They may leave. They may run. I've, I've seen them and just break my heart, it's, you know, especially from the community that we minister to. I'm just so, you know, y'all been, to, I just came to be a part of this. And boy, we got about second song and they <laughs> grab that kid and run out that back door. I'm okay with that because they've had an encounter and, that, and, and they're like, I'm unclean. I got, what, what are you saying, Pastor? Because that was me. And I said there's a devil in that church, but what I know now looking back, I was talking about myself, right? I knew that what was in me was not, it was, I was in the wrong place. <laughs> this is not right. I can't be in here, right? And I'm okay with that because what it did for me is it drove me to the Word. And I began to read that Word and try to argue with these crazed Pentecostals, these cult, get my sister and my girlfriend out of this cult that they're in. They're messed up. i got to rescue them. And the more I read the Word of God, the more I saw He is real. And He is alive. And God has given the ministry of the Holy Spirit for the good of the church and for your best effort, best interest. He wants to edify you, to comfort you, to exhort you, to build you up. Amen? Any other questions? And we're going to pray. Amen. Stand to your feet. I want you to do me a favor. Just two or three or four, groups two or three or four, just, just grab a couple hands. Amen. You can go six or eight if you want to. I'm okay with that too. But I want us to pray together. You know, but before you hold hands, let me just let me preach one more minute. Anybody give me one more minute? One, two, three, four. That's enough. I never come into this pulpit with a, a just a little a little sermon 
Th- there's, uh, I mean, from the 46 years, I've been preaching 40, this is my 41st, coming into my 41st year, I've been preaching the gospel. And I've never come into a pulpit not expecting God just to completely part the Red Sea. I mean, miracles. Just, I, you know, I, I rarely have I seen what I hope to see. I've seen it here. But most of the time, I, I, I'm telling you, I come in here expecting just life-changing, earth-shattering move of God. That's my expectation every time we come together. And I, God is speaking to me a message for Sunday morning, and I'm like, oh, Jesus. Let this be the, the Sunday that the church comes to life. Amen. Every Sunday, I come in there, but I'm, I'm, this Sunday is the same. I want you to pray. Not for me. I'll pray for me. I want you to pray, God, fill me with your Holy Spirit. Let me respond. In Revelation 3, he that has an ear to hear, let him hear. And, and, and the, that word hear means more than just sit passively by and listen. Let the church hear what the voice of the Spirit is saying in this hour. Let us come in here on Sunday, prayed up, not... We, we stayed up till 2 in the morning watching Netflix. But we come in here ready to see God move. Amen. Pray one for another this, this evening. If, if you've not been filled with the Holy Spirit, just ask Him to fill you. Father God, we love you and we thank you for this time. Master, you have brought us to the kingdom for such a time as this. And Lord, I'm asking you in the mighty, mighty, mighty name of Jesus, I pray, God, that we will have a desire, that we will earnestly desire and pursue the best gift. That, Father God, you would stir up in the heart of your church a hunger and a thirst for more of you. I pray, God, that you will begin to move, that that river will begin to flow. That, Lord, it's not man-focused or man Entered, but Lord, by the power of the Holy Ghost, men and women are saved, healed, and delivered. I'm asking you in the mighty name of Jesus, come to your church again. Kiss this sleeping beauty. Wake her up again, oh God. Let the fire of heaven fall in this house like never before. Lord, I pray for my brother and my sister. I'm holding in my hand today. Lord, I'm asking you to fill them with the Holy Ghost. Let signs, wonders, and miracles. God, let the gift of tongues, the baptism of the Holy Ghost, fill their lives in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Flow, Holy Spirit, flow. Let the will and the purpose of heaven be done in every life, Lord, is my prayer. Father God, we pray over that team in Zambia. Lord, they're going to be getting up here in a little bit and starting that conference again. I pray, God, that you will shake the place where they're meeting. Let science and wonders flow. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I'm holding nothing here. Yes, Jesus. For you, my king. Yes, Jesus. For yes, you Jesus. You deserve it. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. 